Hey soldiers, so I don't know if you know that I actually really don't like tabletop games all that much because I'm getting very emotionally heated when it comes to defeat. But ever since my boyfriend and I started playing Baldur's Gate 3, which essentially is Dungeons and Dragons, I have found myself so invested in the story and especially fascinated by a certain thief. And in case you don't know who I'm talking about, it's the one and only car like that I'm going to make today. Because she has muscles, she has tattoos, Wow. and she's all in all just a badass sweetheart. This video is also part of a huge Halloween collab, so wait until the end of the video to see who took part. So I asked Blue Pixie if she could buff up my Nova doll, slap on the tail, and we both worked together on the face, meaning that Blue Pixie did the initial sculpt and I also did some minor details on it. So in order to print Karlek, we need a red resin, right? But you can't really buy solid red 3D printing resin for whatever reason. So I bought some clear red and some resin inks and hope I can mix something that looks close to Carlex's skin tone. I'll make a little trial first and if that works we're gonna mix the rest. Let's go! Okay, so I got all my pieces in the doll bowl now, but as you can see, unfortunately, they didn't turn out as perfect because of the sanding too, they became a bit blind, and the tail I had to print in gray because I didn't have enough red resin. <laughs> so, because I thought this might happen, I came prepared, like in a cooking show. So I already mixed her skin tone in this little cup for my airbrush, and I filled it into my airbrush, and we're gonna airbrush all the pieces now. So before we can assemble Karlek, I also wanted to give her her tattoos. The Pixie found a skin map of Karlek's 3D model from the game, so I was actually able to make vector graphics from her tattoos that totally didn't take me a couple hours to make <laughs> and can now print them onto tattoo decal paper. Stop right there, criminal Scott. After prepping the tattoos for application, I then just have to cut them out with scissors, place them on the doll body and wet them with a sponge and some water. After a couple of seconds, I can then remove the paper and have a really cool tattoo. <laughs> I then just have to repeat the steps a million more times because Karlek actually has quite a collection of tattoos. And to make them less shiny, I also top them with a layer of matte varnish. Oh, and I also paint Karlek's valves chrome silver with chrome silver paint. To make Karlek's scars, I mix some PVA glue with some some red acrylic paint that I concocted concocted? Why did I write that? I mixed it close to Scarlet's skin tone and now apply the scar paste with a wooden skewer. These scars will actually look super badass when dry. With that last step, all the door parts are prepped for assembly. So what I didn't tell you before is that I actually printed Karlek's torso before I printed the whole doll because I want to make her heart engine actually light up. So this time I won't work with Torso Tony but let me introduce to you Torso Tina and the fairy lights <laughs> because I will be using those as a light source. Also why does Torso Tina and the fairy lights sound like some kind of indie band? <laughs> so working Elisa already took the fairy lights and I put them into Torso Tina and it actually works and it looks really really good but I need to shorten them now and they say you can cut fairy lights so I hope that's true because I'm about to cut them. <laughs> oh god moment of truth. <gasps> yes! They still work. Oh my god. Ah! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> nice! Alright, all the doll pieces have been painted, sanded and prepared for the doll to be assembled now and I cannot wait to finally build her together. So let's do that with a little montage. <laughs> The 
The scars and tattoos turned out amazing and she looks super badass already. I know she's missing her horns, but they will be assembled later with a wig. So how about we make that next? So as you guys can see, I already made her a wig cap from some fabric and with some PVA glue. And I also got some black yarn wefts and some red yarn wefts. And now we'll glue her wig. And I will first glue all the wefts on this side of her head. And then in the end, I will do the flocking because I also have some black flocking that I forgot to show you earlier. <laughs> As always, I start building the wig from the back of the hat. But if you're a long-term watcher, you have probably seen this process a million times by now. So let's speed up the process. So I thought I could paint and glue the horns after I'm done with the wig, but actually not because they are incorporated in the hairstyling. So let's paint these bad boys and slap them on the wig now. <laughs> to paint the horns, I use some matte black acrylic paint first, let that whole thing dry, and then dry brush some super dark brown acrylic paint onto them. And then I just simply glue them to the wig and then style the hair by cutting the top layers a little bit shorter and styling and combing them in place with hairspray, a toothbrush and a very beautiful fixated work mouth expression. <laughs> To attach her braids, I just braided some teeny tiny wefts and then just glue them in between the layers on the back of her head. It's time to block now, yay! To apply the flocking, I simply brush on some PVA glue to the side cut and then sprinkle on the tiny fibers. And with some silver beads added to the hair, the wig is already done. <laughs> crazy how a hairstyle alone makes a character pretty much look like that character already. So now I'm actually super curious how her painted face will look like. So let's face that next, shall we? <laughs> Since pearly shimmers don't really fit the aesthetic of Carlac or Baldur's Gate in general, I'm not going to use them this time. I know, how dare I? And basically start by blushing her lips with some dark gray and red pastel chalk dust. Apart from blushing her lips, I'm also giving her a smoky eye with dark gray and black pastel chalk dust as well. In the same run, I also already decided to sketch out her eyebrows with pastel chalk dust and shape them with a kneaded eraser. Before drawing her eyeliner, I actually decided to use some dark dark brown gouache paint to paint her some tiny moles and freckles that the original 3D model actually has. And with the same paint and the same tiny brush, I also decided to give her eyebrows some single hairs. With black acrylic paint, I then paint her a very subtle eyeliner. I'm trying not to overdo it here because of course we want a more natural look for Karlek. After all, medieval times aren't really known for glitz and glamour, but more for other things. <laughs> I also paint her teeny tiny lower lashes with black acrylic paint as well and then mixed a bit of reddish paint to paint her scars. They're very subtle on Carlex's face but I think with them she just looks so so cool. After painting I also go in with the PVA and acrylic paint scar paste mission to make the scars look a little bit more realistic. I do have to be very careful this time though because her face is very small and use a Zahnstocher for the application. Looking good so far, so I think we already can add some gloss to her lips. I only add one layer of gloss this time because I don't want it to be too shiny, but I do like that the gloss darkens her lips a little bit because that's what I was actually going for. Luckily, I found some super short doll lashes online that fit perfectly for Carlac's face. So I just glue them on with some PVA glue. And now we can make her eyes. I printed these tiny eyes on my 3D printer and will now paint the iris gold because I think Carlac has amber colored eyes, but they have this really beautiful sheen to it. It, which the gold paint has. Around the outer ring of the iris I then add some dark brown acrylic paint for some depth and then I can add a drop of resin to the center of the iris and apply some teeny tiny drop shaped black rhinestones that I found in my stash. This will give her her signature pupil look. I cure the whole thing and then can already add the final resin layer creating a nice dome. Hopefully. <laughs> With a finishing layer of UV nail polish, they look really really nice and pretty realistic I think. And here's also the finished face with the dried lashes. I really can't wait to see the eyes and the face combined. So how about we slap them together to see what she looks like. Ah yes, she looks so pretty and so cool. I'm not really used to paint more realistic models like that and it's not really my usual style but it was so much fun to paint this. 
A lot of you guys ask me how I develop my videos and concepts. And truth is, the best thing is to really organize your thoughts. And an amazing tool for this is actually this video's sponsor, Milanote. Instead of having all my ideas just in the air and just going with the flow, now that my projects are getting bigger and more complex, I just have to write things down or they are gone forever. <laughs> But let me show you Mila Note in action. Before I even start, I let Blue Pixie know that I want to make Carlex so that she can already hop onto sculpting. Then, with the help of Mila Note, I created this board and then could, together with my producer Gray, source image references, write notes about details that are super crazy, reference videos of cosplayers and gamers who talk about Carlex, and even make a checklist to keep track of the progress. I was then able to always reference this board when making patterns, painting, and making the wig to make sure I can cram as many details into my doll as possible. <laughs> Being able to collect all my reference images and videos was super important for this process. And I'm so glad that I can now look at all the information now in one place. The collaboration process has always existed, but it has never been done this visually and organically. I really love that I can come to the board and see all the work that Gray and I have done. And this was so much more seamless and we love that we can have everything in one place. Milanote is a tool for creatives that can be used for all sorts of projects. Whether you're a photographer, designer, artist or working in any other creative role, Milanote has templates that will help streamline your work. So if you now have an idea for your own project, make your life so much easier by getting all your references and discussions in one place. Sign up now to Milanote through the link in my description box for a completely free account with no time limit. Thank you Milanote for sponsoring this video and now let's get right back into it. So Karlik's outfit was much more of a challenge than initially anticipated, kind of like always, <laughs> because of all the complexity and the weathering. So this time I will be making all the outfit pieces in one go and won't show you the finished pieces in between and then just add the weathering on other pieces in the end. So if you guys want to know what perfectionism looks like, that's that's what it looks like. <laughs> Leon made this amazing mapping out of the top so that I will have an easier time planning it out and making it. And it is already helping me so much. It's so difficult. I did not know it would be that difficult when I started this project. <laughs> So yeah, let's make it. For the clothes, I also 3D printed these little rings that I purchased online from a Carlec cosplay file and just scaled them down to fit my doll size. I only need to paint all of them gold now and let them dry. Here I prepared a little base for Carlec's top already off cam, put it onto Torso Tina and just clipped it together in the back. And now I just have to basically work along the mapping that Leon did for me and slowly build the top literally strap by strap. <laughs> to attach them, I use my beloved Ubu glue. Every now and then I also have to incorporate some of the little rings that I painted earlier and then try to braid the straps in the correct layout to really make it look as close to Karlik's original armor as possible. It was actually super refreshing to make a clothing piece without a real pattern piece, but instead really work on the mannequin. It remembered me a little bit of fashion school where we actually used to do that a lot. And I kid you not when I tell you that this whole process took hours. So how about we speed up the process here a little bit. I just had to add some teeny tiny studs to the top and with that the top is finally done. And the moment I finished the top I actually received a huge package. Please don't insert a dead joke yet. That's what she said. <laughs> So yeah, Sad Package is actually a new tool that I received from Xtool. More precisely, it's the professional CO2 laser cutting machine. Didi wants to try out the new Xtool laser cutter. <laughs> Exo was so kind to send me their 55 watts P2 CO2 laser cutter, which in contrast to my M1 that I already received from them, can cut clear or holographic acrylic and is all in all just a more professional and more powerful machine. Setting it up was a little bit more of a challenge than the M1 because you have to pour in cooling liquid, but it is very user-friendly described in the manual. <laughs> <laughs> and then I tried some test cutting on some wood panels that I will be actually using later for this doll project. 
So I actually thought this was everything that Xtool is gonna send me, but little did I know that within the next few days I would receive all of these packages oh my god <laughs> and i'm honestly a little blown away thank you so so much x tool but i'm also a little overwhelmed so how about for this video we are going to concentrate on this rotary attachment i might have conveniently already purchased some things that we can engrave on so how about we try that after installing the rotary unit i then insert a little steel tumbler into it and decided to engrave my logo on it with this laser cutter i will be able to make the cool coolest stuff and merch so thank you so much x tool for sending me this amazing machine and all the accessories and if you want to purchase something from x tools website you can click my affiliate link in the description box below to also help out the channel i will actually be using the x tool for the pants in a little bit so how about we draw those weird looking pattern pieces onto the pleather first and cut them out these pants have the weirdest pattern that i ever made for pants so here i'm taking the first two pieces for one leg and we'll first glue around the inner seam allowances because that's where the lacing will go later on. Then put these pieces aside and take an elastic jersey strip where I will now attach this weird looking pattern piece which will be the center butt piece if that makes sense. I slap it on, finished sides in and then take the bigger of the prep leg pieces and sew it onto the other side good sides in as well i now put that piece aside and then take the crotch front piece together with the other two smaller prepped leg pieces for both legs and somehow sew it together <laughs> And here I already pinned everything together along the inner leg and crotch seam and hem them along the pinned seam together as well. And now I have to attach the front waistband piece to the upper part of the back legs. Turn it inside out and then put everything on the doll so that we can make the lacing now. This took so incredibly long because I decided to sew the lacing with some round needles directly onto the pants. I used some dark brown elastic thread for that so that the whole pants will be elastic but it was pretty finicky because I had to pull the fabric together and sew in the lacing in one go and at the same time I had to try to make the lacing look neat. But you see it does look very nice and with a little transition the pants is already completely laced. <laughs> These will actually look so freaking amazing. I'm impressed. Oh and I also added another slit to her left leg for more accuracy and how about we make some more hand stitching <laughs> yay Kalex pants do have some cross stitching along these little front seams so of course i had to add them as well <laughs> with the transition though you don't have to see that boring process lucky you <laughs> i now put the pants on one of my nova dolls so i can add the final details to the pants first i glue these little milk coffee brown triangles that i cut from pleather to the waistband of the pants using some uhu glue. For the knee pad I apply some spray adhesive apparently to my fingers, foam and pleather then put the foam piece onto the pleather and glue around all the little seam allowances and press them down neatly so that the final knee pad piece will look like this. And then I add some lighter brown pleather strips with more uhu glue. I really enjoy making such small accessories actually. <laughs> Figuring out how to make them this small and when the plan in the end actually works is so freaking satisfying <laughs> and when the straps were glued i also add some teeny tiny studs to the knee pad until it's just as bedazzled as the original one and here i used my x2 p2 to cut some foam buckles since this was my first time cutting foam with this powerful laser i was pretty nervous but they turned out fantastic now i can directly use my soft uv resin and apply it to the buckles with a small metal stick i cure the whole thing and then use some liquid chrome silver paint to metallify the buckles. I can't believe they really look like metal with this paint. Wow. No. <laughs> For the pants I also need to make two thigh bands that well will go around her thigh and glue two buckles to pleather strips for that and i just attach them to the pants and thread them through with some tweezers because they are so small. And now comes the fun part. Ugh. Oh god, I'm so scared. I have to cut in tears now into the pants. Oh god, I'm so scared. Oh god, oh god, oh god. I was actually terrified that cutting in the tears into the pants could in worst case actually ruin 
all the hard work but they're so important for the finished look that I really had to do this and luckily they turned out even better than I could have wished for. I then just finished the big tear with some more pleather strips and rings that I glued together on the back of the pants and with that the pants are also done. To make Carlex shoe bases I first wrap her feet in cling film and then use some foam clay and a foam sole that I cut from some EVA foam and sculpt a little toe cap to them. I let that whole thing dry overnight and have some really nice shoe bases the next day. Now I can remove the cling film from the foot and cut some pattern pieces for the shoe from pleather. I first sew together the back seam finished sides in and for easier handling I will also glue down the seam allowances of it. And while we're at it let's glue the upper seam allowances around as well. And now I can hem together the curved front seam and also glue down the seam allowances of that. This way the shoe shape will stay nicely in shape. <laughs> and I just have to turn it inside out and place it on the shoe base and the foot. I pull the lower seam allowances over the edge of the sole and then glue the seam allowances on the bottom of the sole. With my uber glue this was an easy thing to do but I still do it slowly and carefully and cut away any excess if necessary because we don't want those weird bumps on the bottom of the sole. And I still have some nuts on nice edges I can actually melt them off with a lighter. Just make sure not to burn yourself. No I'm not speaking from experience here. What are you talking about? I then just add a pleather toe cap to the front of the shoe and to finish it I glue a pleather sole to the bottom of the sole to hide any ugly parts and the foam sole. So with the initial outfit pieces all done let's make all the little accessories because there's actually quite a few. <laughs> First I'm going to make Carlex arm accessories and start by cleaning up the upper and bottom seam allowances of this pattern piece. Afterwards I can sew it together along the back seam, finish sides in, turn them inside out with an apparently very funny brush. Keep smile. <laughs> And then using one of my Nova dolls as a model, wrap around some more pleather strips. I glue them in place and then push some mini 3D printed and painted teeth underneath them. For Carlex's left arm piece I made a piece the same way as I made the knee pad and now glue some teeth to it as well. I then wrapped and glued pleather strips around it and top everything off with tiny studs. Carlex's right upper arm has an armor piece that I actually had a 3D printing file for so I simply scaled it down, printed it and now just have to paint it. Then I simply glue the little shield to the arm cuff and attach the little 3D printed teeth as well. In the end I just paint them silver with silver chrome paint. Kalek also has some leg armor on her lower legs so let's make these next. I slap these three pieces together like this first and then just sew them together along the back seam. I turn them inside out and for easier handling put them on the doll legs and then use all the other buckles that I made earlier to make her leg straps. I wrap them around like I did on the first leg piece and with this last piece all the accessories and clothing pieces for Carleg are finally done. They look so so good but they definitely need some weathering and aging. This way the armor will look much more authentic and I actually cannot wait to do the weathering now. So all the outfit pieces are done now as you can see but they of course need some weathering because they look brand new and Carleg's armor doesn't look brand new. So I already tried to do the weathering on this arm piece here and you can see it looks really really cool and in order to do that I'm going to use some paints, brushes, a little sponge applicator and some pastel chalk and I'm going to show you now how I'm gonna do that. Aging added, the outfit looks absolutely incredible. And actually with this last step the doll is technically done. But you guys know me, I kind of always have to overdo it, right? So I had quite the idea what I still wanted to make. Okay, so as if the doll isn't already enough work, I also decided to make her camp tent for whatever reason, probably because I'm crazy. <laughs> so in order to do that, I asked my dad and he already cut a huge plate for the diorama. And what we're going to do next is we're going to use these sticks, cut them to length, top them off with some little 3D printed pillar thingies that Leon was so kind to sculpt for me. And then we're going to build her tent and make all the little decorations. Ah, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs>
as you can see, I have a very weird looking chestnut animal here. And before I'm gluing in these 10 sticks, I'm actually going to stain them with this ancient wood stain that I got from my dad. <laughs> And then I'm also going to be painting these little bubbles. I don't know what they're called in English. Glue them to the sticks ends. And then we can glue them in and then build the tent. Oops. <laughs> To make the actual tent, I just slapped together some roughly measured triangles and then just attached them with strings and glue to the chestnut animal legs. For the front part of the tent, I made some gold trim that I will now iron on and then glue on the tent. With my new X-Tool machine, I acquired the knowledge that you can cut PU leather with a CO2 laser. So I cut it out and then just have to paint it red. And then I just attached the trim with some hot glue to the tent. Now the only thing missing on the tent is some weathering on the fabric. I also decided to print Carlex X and now simply have to clean it up, wash it and cure it and in the end just simply paint it with some acrylics. And now we can decorate the diorama with all the little things that I got or I made for it and hopefully create an amazing scenery for the doll. And then I can also finally put the doll completely together for the very first time. And with this step, completely finish this project. This moment is always so magical. All right, I just put her together and she turned out so amazing. I know you guys are dying to see her. So let me show you my version of Carlac. And here is my version of Carlac. I hope you love her as much as I do. And if you like the diorama process, I can tell you that this might have been a little appetizer of what's to come next year. And if you want to see more Halloween dolls now, make sure to check out my friends' videos from Dolumentary, Electric Bunny VT, Ententerium, Pharaoh Dolls, H. Alicrafts, His Name is Aiken, I Could Do That DIY, Kairos Workshop, Mr. Super Customs, The Dolly Geek, and The Kitty's World as well. All the dolls are literally so cool. <laughs> Big shout out also to to my patrons again you guys are the very best for your continuous support thank you guys so much for watching and see you soon with a very special challenge video bye and now we can deck <laughs> <laughs>